Hey all welcome back to the Fire and Water Cooking Channel. I'm Darren and today it's turkey time. We're going to do some turkey and actually I'm going to take this uh, smaller turkey. It's going to be a practice run for Thanksgiving and we're going to actually spatchcock it and sous vide this one. But right now what I'm going to do is just get it ready. I'm going to dry brine it. I'm going to go ahead and dry brine this turkey. Anyway, when you buy these store-bought turkeys, um, you know pretty much if they're the you know store brand like Publix or we uh, Wegmans or <clears throat> Winn Dixie, whatever, if they're um, the cheaper type, even the butter balls, a lot of times you got to read um, read the directions here, read what's actually in them. A lot of these come pre-brined; they already have they're injected with a brine already, so. Anyone like that, you really don't want to over brine it and get too much salt in the meat. That's another thing with, you know, with dry brining. It's really um, not going to put too much salt. I can control the amount of salt that actually gets on the meat to get into the meat. So I'm going to go ahead and get this all spatchcocked up and we're going to do a dry brine on it and throw it in the uh, expandable food saver bags and all right guys like I said this is a smaller turkey this is only right around 12 pounds so you can tell it's not a big 20 pounder or so so it's going to make this kind of easy to cook so it does have a decent size breast plate on it but I went ahead and took it out of the bag rinsed it off took all the guts and the neck and everything out but what I'm going to do now batch cock this and I am going to use my um poultry scissors so I did a video a week or so ago on how to spatchcock poultry go ahead and look at that if you need to but I'm gonna go ahead and get this done all right guys I got it all spatchcocked flattened it out some I'm gonna flatten it out just a little bit more just by pushing down on that breastbone got my thighs legs spread out my wings kind of backed up and I'm gonna go ahead and put the uh, brine on and what I use is some kosher salt some running wild lemon pepper garlic powder paprika and some Italian seasoning so I'm not gonna do it like I said a ton I'm just enough to kind of coat the skin and I kind of rub it in like I said this turkey has already been injected with a salt water solution so it doesn't need a ton of brine and we're going to put this in the refrigerator for about 24 hours and there you go it's kind of a basic poultry brine that I do it's not doesn't have a ton of salt in it just enough to kind of get it to retain some moisture got some color to it I'm probably put a little bit more seasoning on it after it comes out of the sous vide but I'm gonna go ahead and bag this up and I'll be right back all right guys I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna bag this up I got my expandable food saver bag here and I made it pretty long because I just didn't know how much this is going to have to uh, expand out. So we're going to go ahead and slide this in just like that. Now these should be able to hold up to uh, 18 or 20 pound turkey might take two people to get it in there or you might want to break the turkey down into pieces so it's all up to you but I'm gonna go ahead and get this in the bag believe it I got this all sealed up like I said it's only a 12 pound turkey so it's pretty much like a really big chicken it will fit uh, Probably I'm gonna to try to get an 18 pounder in here when I do my next one, but um, They are you know, they do you know take some bigger bigger pieces of meat in these expandable bags So I'm sure I could get an 18 to 20 pound bird in here it may take a little work, but um, to me When I spatchcock it I want the at least I'm not gonna be able to cook it whole I'd like to have some kind of presentation on the plate, but you don't have to you can cut them up into pieces a lot of people suggest you cut the uh, white and the dark meat separate, but we're going to spatchcock this one just in, just so we can uh, see how it turns out. So, all right, guys, this is going to sit in the refrigerator for 24 hours. I'll be Just 
pulled it out of the sous vide bag and I just kind of want to show you what it's looking like looks kind of ugly all wet I'm gonna go ahead and dry this off And I think I'm going to leave it in this pan because it's going to be easier. But I'm going to throw it right on the top. All we're doing is crisping this up. And I'm going to go ahead and monitor the inside of the turkey as well. Because I want people to see. I've done these with chickens before and people think that the internal temperature gets way hotter than it actually does. So I'm going to go ahead and put that right there in the thickest part of the breast. Right there. And we can monitor the internal temp of that turkey as well. And we're going to leave it on here for about uh, 15 minutes. We'll come back and check it and see. Guys, I wanted to show you real something really quick. It's been about 10 minutes since I put that turkey on and I stuck the uh, thermometers in. The uh, grill temp has kind of fluctuated back down to about 459 or so. But the, if you can see, the internal temp of that turkey hasn't really climbed at all since I put it in that hot, hot grill. Now this is a phenomenon that people don't seem to understand. As you can tell, <laughs> that temperature has not changed much at all since I threw that turkey on the grill. And literally it's been over 10 minutes and it hasn't even gone up a degree. It's sitting right there at 145. So I don't know what uh, scientific principle it is. It's got to have something to do with thermodynamics, I'm sure, that that uh, internal temperature of the turkey or chicken, since it's a lot hotter um, than a normal, you know, refrigerated turkey or chicken would be, that maybe the temperature doesn't climb as fast. Maybe that's what it is, but, but as you can see, you know, this grill is over 400 degrees. And like I said, it's been on there for a good 10 minutes. I've been talking for over two minutes and it's just risen, you know, two degrees. So, all right, I'll be back guys in a few minutes. We're gonna open this up and see how it's doing. All right guys, it's been right at about 15 minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. I'll show you how we're coming along as far as getting crispy. And that looks pretty good, pretty golden. Right at 15 minutes. And right at about four, seven, 470 right now. All right, grill. guys, I'm going to go ahead and open this up for one more time. Now, the ink bird, if you can see over on the left, is saying 154 internal, and it's still sitting right at 450 or so on the inside of the uh, cooker. But what I'm going to do is hit this with my instant read lava tools and see what it says. And I'm going to put it right next to where the other probe is and that is saying the same exact thing at 154 so that lava tool instant read is saying the same thing that inkbird is saying so all right guys it looks good enough to me I'm gonna go ahead and take this off and I'll be right back all right guys take a look at that how does that look nice and golden brown I mean the skin is a little crispy it's not the crispiest I've had but um, it's crispy enough I'm gonna go ahead and separate this leg here I'll do this one here as well I'm gonna go ahead and remove this show you that that is cooked all the way. That has just done this right there. All right, well, there's the breast. I'm gonna cut right into that. I just cut a little piece right here so that we can get a taste of this. Whew. Look at all that juice coming out. I'm dipping in there. Take a look at that. That's the breast. Still juicy. 
like I said, I don't know what it is, but um, the temp just does not rise really quick when you throw a sous vide bird in there. Mm. And it's fantastic. I'll tell you what, this came out fantastic, and we're going to go ahead and get this in our gullets and eat it up. So I'll we'll take another bite just so you guys can see. It's how juicy and meaty that is. That's perfect. So, thanks a lot for following me, guys. Hopefully, um, you'll have a good Thanksgiving. If you do it this way, um, I don't think you'll have a problem. Go ahead and make sure you like this video. Follow us on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter. Go ahead and subscribe to our channel so you can see more videos like this. Check out the Inkbird. Um, I'm going to put a link to my... Uh, Amazon store. I just got a fire and water cooking Amazon store. I've got a lot of those products like these towel cutlery knives that you see me use all the time and um, that ink bird uh, thermometer. I really like that. It has a really good range. I had it about 60 or 70 feet away and it was working fine. Um, but check out the Amazon store and I'll see you guys on the next video.